ففروا إلى الله إني لكم منه نذير مبين ولا تجعلوا مع الله إلها آخر إني لكم منه نذير مبين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على شرف المرسلين Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sabi wa salim tuslim wa salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah wa bilamin. We'll be discussing the child of Ramadan. Who is the child of Ramadan? The child of Ramadan is a Muslim child because it is only Muslims that fast during the month of Ramadan. And Ramadan is a special month in the life of all Muslims. Children are not exempted from enjoying the, the blessings of Allah in this month of Ramadan. So as parents, we should encourage children. Children are of various ages. We have children ages, uh, if you talk about babies, the infants, they are definitely exempted from fasting. But if you have children from age seven and above, we can encourage them to fast even before they, are, they, they attain the age of puberty. So some of our children might not have attained puberty, but we can encourage them to fast. Just like Rasulullah Sallam encouraged us to encourage them to, to pray when they are seven and to beat them when they are ten. If you look at that adit where he encouraged Muslims to encourage the children to pray while they're seven, and if they don't pray when they are ten, we should beat them. So we can use that to corroborate the fact that when a child is around the age of seven, we can also encourage such a child to fast once he or she has the strength to but we might not make it compulsory for them. We can only encourage that child. But even when our, child, when our children are not fasting, we should know that all other acts of worship that we might engage on, they too can engage in it, and we can make them useful, and also for them to gain the realm of Allah in this special month of Ramadan. Because there is no month that is as this month. So if we know this fact, we will not exempt our children for fasting. Because when we are not there, it is what we might have taught them that they will live with and we're able to encourage other children to, to live with that. So how do we encourage our children? How do we imbibe the spirit of Ramadan to, to be with them during this month and for them to live after it, after the month of Ramadan? Number one is that when we set our goals as mothers, as parents, we should also set goals for them. We shouldn't, we shouldn't forget them or neglect them, thinking that they are too young to do one thing or the other. As we set our goals, I'm sure most of us will have set one or two goals for ourselves. I want to read three Korean. I want to make sure that I observe all my tajud. But be it as it may, we should also encourage all these set goals that we might have laid down for ourselves. We should encourage, we should set it for our children as well, so that we do it in, in family. Why, why they see us doing this? Because parents are, that, are the best role model for their children. We don't just tell them to do it, we tell us us doing it. When they see us doing it, they follow suit. If they know that my mother is such that there is no time after, after Salat, you see that and take her Quran. By the time you tell them, Yusuf, go and pick up for Quran. They too will do the same. Mariam, can you get a copy of, of, uh, of your Quran there? Let us do revision. They also do the same thing. So you must set the goals together. The second thing is that even though they are not fasting, you must encourage them to, when if there are children that are not fasting, if there are those that are fasting, you should, they should know the rights and the virtues that are there in Ramadan. Just like fasting is not, is not just the mere living of food and drink. They should, should understand that. When they understand that, they're able to live according to the way we are meant. They, they, they're able to engage in good activities that make them to gain the realm of Allah during the month and after. What are those things that they are also meant to do? Like I said earlier, when we set the goals for them, the goals include making sure that they observe all the salat to time. They might be fasting or not, depending on their ages, like I said earlier. So if there are those that are not fasting, we should encourage them to observe the Salat, knowing fully well that this month, there is no acts of Ibadah that go unwasted or go unnoticed. So we shouldn't think that they are too small to gain the reward of to gain the realm of Allah. Knowing fully well that a good child is one of those legacies that first Islam told us that one of those things that remain with us after we die, that will keep praying, that will keep counting for the disease is a good child. That remember the child. So it is when we train them while they are young, that even they, they will have to do that after our demise. So we should encourage them to observe salat to time, like adults too. Those that don't know how to pray yet, we should encourage them to start praying. Then if you have ages that 
already knows how to read the Quran. We can they are their meals. We can encourage them to lead us in salat. Lead us in tarawi while at home. You shouldn't say that no, I want to because I want to read uh, three uh, three myself. I want to read three uh, three rounds of Quran. So I don't want I want to concentrate on my tarawi. Let them and also engage in that. If they are males, they can lead us in Tarawi. And, and afterwards, we do a lot of other things after Salat. Then we can also, the other thing we can encourage them to do during this month is charity. We know that Islam has given priority to alms giving. And this is not, this is even in manifold during the month of Ramadan. So if we, if we want to encourage them to do charity in this month, we can give them and tell them to give others. Tell them to give things to, our, to their friends, to give things to their needy, and they will know the importance, and they will feel happy doing it. And thereafter, even when they have little things with them, they will know that charity is part of the and I must do it because we have taught them, and we have learnt, we have told them to do it, and they have learnt it during the month of Ramadan. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu qu anfusakum wa ahlikum naran نارا وقودها الناس والحجارة عليها ملائكة غلاظ شداد لا يعصون الله ما أمرهم ويفعلون ما يؤمرون. What are all those that we were meant to do with them? During this during this month and beyond, we are meant to engage them in. Islamic literatures, that they are meant to read uh, literatures, rather than for them to, to toy away with their time, with playing, they might be active. Even though those of us are adults, we might, we might feel lethargic at some time, but children, based on their activity, they, based on their nature, they, they might be active for, for, for some time, even more than adults, even while they are fasting. So you should encourage them not to waste the time playing. Especially when they are boys, they might want to start playing ball just to while away the time. They keep asking, Mommy, when am I going to break my fast? Rather than for them wasting their time on all those, we should also encourage them to read Islamic literatures. To read, we read to them and they read their own as well. And we can do the summary together thereafter. We can also engage them in, in meal, in cooking, in, 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 in cleaning of the household. Because their fasting doesn't mean that we should keep them idle or lazy. While we and the kitchen as mother, or we are doing one house chore or the other, we can also encourage them to engage in it. So these are some of those things that we can encourage them to do in the month of Ramadan. We can also encourage them to learn a dua during this month. That they should learn a dua and know the meaning. Learning a dua, those who are did not know before, that they have not learned before. This month we can encourage them to learn more of those dua. A lot of dua abound. A lot of dua, dua for knowledge, dua for for good life, we have for protection, amongst others. We can encourage them to learn a new one and imbibe the meaning and to teach others when they know it. So why not waste their time? We can encourage them to, to learn, to be creative with their time. They can create a uh, beginning of Ramadan for them to do one or two decorations. And Ramadan is a guest and they, too, they will value Ramadan in their heart. They can decorate the household for us when, in, in case we have not done that. And if you have done that, towards the end of Ramadan, we can encourage them to do eat gift that they can give to neighbors. They can even use to decorate the house. And thereafter, they will learn that Ramadan is that special month where Muslims are blessed immensely by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So knowing fully well that in Islam, that according to the Anadis of Prophet, where he said that we are all leaders and we shall be asked how we have led our flocks. If you want our children to live the life of Ramadan by excellence, we, we, we parents, we as parents must also do the same thing. If you want a child to read, uh, to read his or her Quran, we must do that at that point in time. We want a child to pray to time, we must also pray to time. So whatever we want our children to do in this month, we should be the presenter for such acts. And when we notice that during, during this month and beyond, our children, they, are, they engage in, in uh, abusive words, insultive words. We tell them that in Ramadan, even if, it's even a month that shouldn't say such word. As Prophet has told us that when we're fasting, if somebody comes to, to look for our trouble, because children, they, they might say, ah, he's the one that looks for my trouble. Is this, is that. We should tell them that. You should tell the person, in his time, I'm fasting. And this is absorb them from engaging in acts that might betray their fast 
or acts that might vitiate other people's fast, they will know the value of fasting and they'll be able to engage in that thereafter. If you want them to, to bring out the best in them in Ramadan, you should encourage them to document their act of kindness, just like when they do good things in school, when they come home, mommy, I scored 40 40 in my exam, I did this too. So in the same vein for Ramadan too, we should make sure that they, they have value for the deeds that they want to do. Because these deeds are for Allah alone and nobody else, it's not for us. We should inculcate in them that whatever they are doing in this month is not for mommy, it's not for daddy, it's not for uncle, it's not for their neighbors, but for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they should have a call to those deeds and document them. Documenting them is not by having a big group, but for them to know that mommy, today I'm able to read my Quran, I'm able to do, uh, I'm able to, to complete my fast, I'm able to do my, I'm able to do ifs, I'm able to do one more, add more, add more surah, one more surah to what I've learned. And to make those, all these acts and many more that I might, I, might not, I might not have even stated, to make it encouraged for them, we should do it in family. When we do things with our children, the act will go a longer way for them to practice act, the act, even while we are there or not. But when we don't do it with them, doing it alone might not even be easy for them. So for us to have that good child that will come out of Ramadan, renew. And, and being rebirth is for us to train them well, for them to engage in all these acts while in this month and encourage them. They see us doing it and they'll be able to do it as well. We pray Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make our children Kurota Ayun. There is for Deen, Al Islam, religion with Allah since time began. There is for the remembering Allah and rise for the month of Ramadan. Oh, Ramadan That is for zakah to cure our greed When we give our money to those in need That is for salamun alaykum Peace be with you, alaykum as-salam